Welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, well, uh, my name is Vittorio. I'm the director of Magazzino Italian Art. I'm actually here, uh, uh, as I was telling uh, the others, like, you know, Magazzino uh, Rio, I mean, uh, <laughs> Magazino is open, is back to have his regular hours from Thursday through Monday for the last uh, uh, month. Uh, we actually reopen uh, July 10 with an exhibition that you see around me, which is uh, uh, homemade. And I'm very excited about doing this program uh, with uh, Chiara, our uh, assistant curator for the show. And... Uh, uh, Alessandro Teoldi, Davide Balliano, Maria Rapicaoli, and, uh, uh, and Danilo Correale. Uh, I just for you that you may not know, but uh, uh, the project Homemade started as a, a, a digital program that we launched right at the beginning of the pandemic and it translated uh, into an exhibition. So would we uh, what we did along with uh, eight artists, uh, all Italian, but living in New York, uh, we worked together to uh, create a uh, new work uh, from their home or their studio, but anyway, uh, and then we'll get into the topics of the webinar, uh, dealing with some of the emotions and restrictions and uh, uh, suggestions that the pandemic uh, brought uh, and issues that brought uh, um, brought um, uh, to surface, but also uh, homemade. I do want to uh, see it as an experience, as an experiment of uh, social, in a way, experiment of really building community during those time of fragility. And uh, we're gonna touch upon this uh, topic as well with Chiara. I do want to just uh, uh, thank uh, again all the artists uh, that participated, uh, our founders Nancy Olnik and Giorgio Spano, the team of Magazzino. Chiara for the brilliant work. Uh, I do want to say just a few things is that I know some of you are only watching us uh, online and you won't be able to travel, uh, but, Mag but uh, Magazzino is open and the show is open until uh, Labor Day. So you'll be able to come and see the show uh, in person if you are around. We do have a reservation system, so check our website to make sure that you can uh, book a visit. And uh, I leave it to our brilliant uh, assistant curator, the pillar of uh, Homemade, Chiara Manarino, and to all the four great artists uh, uh, that we have today. Thank you, thank you all. Grazie Vittorio. And hello and welcome to everyone who's joining us today. Thank you so much for being here to speak about this very, very special project called Homemade, uh, and Vittorio already gave a wonderful introduction. Um, and yesterday, we were in conversation with four of the artists, um, Francesco Simetti, Beatrice Scaccia, Andrea Mastrovito, and Luisa Rabbia. And today, we have the remaining four artists with us, um, Alessandro Teoldi, Davide Bagliano, Danilo Correale, and Maria Di Rapicavoli. Um, and they are all absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we do hope, again, that you will come visit the exhibition if you're able to uh, that's now on view to the public at Magazzino in Gallery 8. Um, and before going any further, I also want to say some thanks. Um, so thank you first to Vittorio. It's been such an honor working with you on this project and collaborating so closely. Um, so thank you for giving me this incredible opportunity. Uh, thank you to the co-founders of Magazzino Italian Art, um, Nancy Olnick and Giorgio Spanu, without whom absolutely none of this from the virtual portion of the project to uh, the exhibition that is now on view at the museum would have been possible. Um, so I'm very grateful and honored to be a part of this beautiful vision. Um, a huge thanks to the entire team of Magazzino. You are all amazing and so hardworking, and this was really a group effort in every way. So thank you so much for your amazing support throughout the project. And finally, thank you so much to our eight participating artists. Um, you've given me so much hope and joy in this very, very difficult time. And it's been such a gift collaborating with each and every one of you on Homemade. Um, and I'm very, very excited to have your incredible artworks on view. So again, we really hope that those who are able will come take a look at the exhibition. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to give just a brief overview for the program for today. Uh, so in just a moment, I will introduce each of the four artists that we have joining us in conversation. I'll give some background on their practice and walk you through their processes throughout the project with some accompanying visuals. And then we'll begin our conversation. 
So I have a few questions for the artists and then towards the end of the webinar, I'll open for questions from the audience. Um, you should see a chat section right underneath the video on the Magazino website and you can just type right into that at any point throughout the webinar to ask questions. Um, so without further ado, it is my absolute honor and pleasure to introduce the artist that we have joining us today. So I'm going to share my screen. There we go. And we can begin. Okay. So first we have Alessandro Teoldi, an artist from Milan, Italy, who explores themes of tenderness, intimacy, and care through intricate large-scale collages. He has most recently united plain blankets that he manipulates into forms of human figures to create textile works like the ones you see here, which is included in the exhibition, that capture ambiguously motivated and fleeting moments of contact and touch. In this time of global pandemic, during which our ways of connecting with one another have been forced to adapt and transform, Theology's choice in material, which recalls the journeys we take and the distances we are willing to travel to be with loved ones, assumes entirely new significance. Working from home during the lockdown without access to the materials and tools he typically uses inspired him to return to these familiar subjects and methods from a different perspective. For homemade, Teoldi used a variety of paper types, from old photograph paper to the encasings of fette biscottate, which are traditional breakfast biscuits, to create a series of collages depicting figures in a state of embrace or longing. Once completed, he covered them with fresh homemade concrete, one of the most foundational materials for home construction. With its heavy weight and liquid consistency, this concrete destroyed Teoldi's paper constructions while simultaneously assuming their unique imprint as it dried. Solidified in the form of a concrete boss relief, these images of interdependence, yearning, and care become powerful and poetic meditations on what builds connection, comfort, and home. His final four boss reliefs, now on view at Magazzino, solidify the artist's longing for touch in their hardened cement form. As human contact becomes an increasingly foreign concept and feeling during this time of global pandemic, Teoldi's works memorialize acts of tenderness, intimacy, and care in an effort to remind us all of their healing power and significance in our everyday lives. Their visual recollection of moments of togetherness recall the days preceding these months, leaving viewers yearning for the past. However, they simultaneously look forward, encouraging us to collectively dream of a bright future to come. Next, we have Davide Bagliano, an artist from Turin, Italy, whose research deeply examines the tension between sculpture and painting. Utilizing an austere, minimal language of abstract geometries in strong dialogue with architecture, his work investigates such existential themes as the identity of man in the age of technology. For homemade, Bagliano deviated from his typical practice involving geometric paintings in black and white, and embraced color in order to understand his signature style with more clarity. Using tubes of paint in bright hues and readily available materials meticulously organized in the studio, Pagliano began the project by putting aside his habitual and disciplined practice to create a series of expressionistic and gestural color studies. In addition to incorporating color into his work for the first time in years, Pagliano also attempted to avoid rigid structure and a precise plan instead swirling color paint onto paper in melodic strokes. Through this instinctual process, he gravitated towards certain hues which offer a sense of security and calm. By navigating the delicate and spontaneous process of selecting which shades to pair together, Pagliano created a series of expressive studies that embody connection, balance, and harmony. The investigation and use of color was the threshold that Pagliano was from the very beginning hesitant to conceptually cross. However, creating his colorful studies on paper allowed him to embrace the unknown and to understand his practice with new, newfound clarity. After almost two months, Pagliano returned to his characteristic mode of making with enlightened perspective and insight. His experience of having to carefully determine the balance between various hues inspired him to create a large-scale painting, which you can see here and also in the exhibition, that celebrates the amalgamation of all colors, white. This final work metaphorically unifies Pagliano's numerous studies and represents just how illuminating the process of creating them has been. Our third panelist is Maria Di Rappicavoli, 
an artist from Catania, Italy, whose practice developed from a background in photography, film, and video, and has expanded to include sculpture and site-specific installation. Rappicavoli's work explores conditions and experiences of power, alienation, invisibility, and displacement through a critique of economic and political systems. However, having to adjust to life under quarantine and reckon with the unprecedented nature of our current moment, Rappicavoli chose to examine the ambiguities, fears, and uncertainties accompanying this time through photography and a series of written reflections. At the beginning of the project, Rappicavoli focused on life outside of her apartment by taking photographs of the unusual compositions she came across in her neighborhood. She became particularly infatuated with the piles of glass shards that she encountered outside of a broken storefront window. So much so that she tried to save the remnants to be repurposed for her homemade project, but ultimately abandoned them for fear of bringing a foreign contaminant into her home. Rappicavoli then turned to her domestic space and began taking photos inside of her apartment for the first time. She turned her camera lens to the remnants of all of the wine glasses she broke in quarantine, which reminded her of the shattered window, along with the sunbeams that entered her bedroom every afternoon. In an effort to understand new rhythms of time, she divided her reflections into chapters. In the end, Rappi Cavoli returned to where the project began, creating an exact replica of the broken storefront window using glazed white ceramic. Through hours of meticulous molding and modeling of the individual clay pieces that occupied every inch of her apartment, she was able to meditate on her own experience of having to rebuild and reimagine her current reality in this exceptional time. And finally, we have Danilo Correale, an artist and researcher from Naples, Italy, whose practice investigates labor, leisure, and laziness as metaphorical lenses into the postmodern socio-political and economic landscape. He has consistently explored temporality, boredom, and the notion of unproductivity in his work long before these concepts became common conversation topics at the start of the quarantine. After what, what was meant to be a weekend long respite on an island in Massachusetts turned into several months of isolation in the company of a small group of artists due to the announcement of the US lockdown, Correale found himself far from his New York home and studio. He began homemade under these circumstances, having only the minimal possessions he packed with him, pens, printer paper, and his laptop as his artistic materials. Out of his comfort zone, Correale turned inward choosing to examine themes that are familiar to his practice from a more personal and vulnerable perspective. Throughout the project's duration, Correale created an ongoing and extensive list of his artistic projects and endeavors, realized, unrealized, yet to be conceptualized, or still in progress, along with a variety of concepts, places, artistic mediums, personal and societal issues, and his own fleeting thoughts. Together, these words and phrases create an archive of the artist's interests and history, capturing the ways in which ideas adapt, change, and persist over time. Correale began compiling the substantial catalog through digital data renderings and later decided to incorporate his own hand into the work. His shift towards manual labor allowed him to meditate deeply on the notion of time, especially as it relates to completing an artwork in this unprecedented moment. Through a time and labor intensive process involving rigorous and patient transcription of the typographic characters comprising his lengthy inventory, Correale charted and reflected upon his past, present, and future. In the resulting work on paper, which you can see here and in the exhibition, he divides the data into two columns that he connects through an intricate web of lines and arrows. As you can already tell from this image, the subtleties that comprise this piece and the messages embedded within it can only be revealed if viewers come very close and spend time with it. This important detail mirrors the artist's experience of making the work and honors this process while simultaneously serving as a challenge. As you can see here, Correale used his body to inform the scale of the final piece, which further acknowledges its deeply personal nature. So please join me in welcoming these wonderful artists, Alessandro, Davide, Maria, and Danilo. Ciao a tutti, and thank you so much for being here today. So to begin, there are so many different aspects to this project, but I'm wondering if we can start by talking a bit about the challenges that accompanied Homemade, uh, because this has obviously been 
such a difficult and truly unprecedented time and one that's really required our collective adaptation in numerous ways. And I think from an artistic perspective, um, it involved an adjustment to working in a new environment and with potentially unfamiliar mediums, new restrictions, um, and of course, in this very precarious moment. And there was quite a bit of commonality, I think, within the group, but also so, so much variation. So I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on the obstacles that you encountered and on what you've learned from this experience. So maybe, Ala, you can begin. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I think that, you know, like, as you said, it was a very challenging time. And I think that, you know, like one thing that um, is common to all of us is the fact that, first of all, we had to deal with the pandemic, you know, like we would, you know, like woke up, wake up every morning and we would have to, you know, like deal with the horrible news that we would read, you know, like on the newspaper. And that's like something for sure that it was, you know, like a quite challenging thing. Um, and then for me specifically, I did not, uh, you know, like, regarding to the work, I did not have access to my studio. So I really had to, you know, like transform my dining table basically into, you know, like my workspace. And that was, you know, like for sure, you know, like a, um, something that took a little while to, you know, like adjust to. Um, and then I knew, you know, like that I wanted to work, um, I wanted to focus a lot the work about, you know, like this idea of like stillness that um, I felt very much present in my life in those days, you know, like, so I wanted to experiment with concrete, which is a, a, a material that I always wanted to, you know, like work with, but I never really had the chance to, you know, like experiment and play with. So it, you know, like homemade was really like, a, for me, a perfect residency for this, you know, like it gave, it gave me the time to start, you know, like approaching this new material. Um, and it was extremely excited about, I was extremely excited about that. Um, but it was for sure, you know, like challenging in the fact that it was a new material and I didn't really know, you know, like how to, um, how to deal with that at the very beginning. And it was, you know, like in a domestic space and it's quite messy. So it was, you know, like it, it did have, you know, like a, a, a initial moment of adjustment. Um, and I think that, you know, like as far as the concerns, you know, like all the learning experience, I think it was, you know, like uh, for sure, like, a, um, very very helpful for me and it was I think that I learned something that probably I knew already which is uh, the first thing how much the space influences your work you know like on so many levels and it's not just about the format that for me was you know like you know like I live in a tiny 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 apartment in Brooklyn and you know like all the works that I made during those months are you know like very little watercolors you know like or very little you know like um very little you know, the concrete pieces are eight by ten so they're very uh tiny and uh, there's something about the connection between the format and the intimacy of a domestic space that i think it was extremely important and very fascinating to see just you know like coming through the work uh in a almost unconscious way um and then about you know like lastly just you know like how much art i think is about resourcefulness you know like and how much you have to deal with whatever you have around and that was very it was a nice exercise how about you i think that my main challenge uh, it came probably probably as everybody else from the from the from the time let's say rather than from the from the project itself and I think that the main struggle has been to kind of hold on to a sense of uh, meaning and relevance in uh, uh, as an artist, I mean. Uh, because I think that, you know, I mean, starting with the pandemic, but then especially being in New York uh, through the, all the, 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 the reaction that has been uh, recently to, to systemic racism and police brutality, that, I felt, and I think we all feel in, in, in a time that demands uh, a direct response, it demands a statement, it demands that you take and make clear your, uh, your opinion. And it has been a challenge because I naturally agree with that. I think that we all need to, uh, need to take a stand. But on the other side, I'm also aware that uh, my work doesn't operate that way, let's say. Uh, my work, I think that is deeply rooted in a conversation, maybe with, uh, with the human experience at large, I would say, but I don't think that, uh, uh, that my research make direct comments on our time. 
So my, my, my dad is, was now a retired um, a scientist, a biochemist, a biochemist professor. And um, he often stressed the importance of uh, pure research uh, as, as compared to applied research, which, which is equally important. And uh, I always love that difference because uh, pure research focus of, focuses on uh, understanding like the properties and the processes, kind of like the form, let's say, in the structures. While applied research uh, uses information to create a useful outcome, a useful material, let's say. Uh, so I think that I, I, I belong more in the, in the pure research section, let's say. So in, in a section that, I, that kind of operates for the, for the sake of research and for the sake of developing uh, our language. So I think that Magazzino gave me a great opportunity because I, I, I took this, this chance to do something that I would normally keep very much as a kind of as a private as a private moment in the studio and i thought that uh, the best way to kind of impose challenges that i didn't have because i did reach my studio for pretty much the whole time was to kind of make a series of studies in um, mainly in color and as you mentioned chiara in color and gesture which is diametrically opposed in what i do and um, what i learned is that that i can you can learn a lot kind of pushing what you do and trying to operate in ways that are, uh, that are against what you feel as, a, as your nature. And I, I feel that I did learn a great amount of, uh, of insights on my relationship with, with geometry, with color, with materials, or with my, mm -hmm. my practice at large, you'd say. That's great. Thank you. Maria, how about you? You had a very, I mean, your work was very different than your typical practice. So yes. I'm curious to hear from you. <laughs> well, yes, because my life was totally different. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it completely changed uh, my habits, everything. Um, so because I couldn't go to the studio anymore and all of a sudden my apartment, which was a place where I usually was going just to sleep, became the place where I was living in and all the time. And, uh, and also I, I was isolated. I'm, I, I just was alone uh, all the time because all the social relationships were completely cut. So to me, it was like a totally big difference in, in my life. And of course, it affected a lot my, um, sorry, my, uh, my practice totally because um, I usually work a lot uh, with, uh, I mean, I use photography and, sc and sculpture a lot, but uh, my work is really, um, I, I work outside. I never really use my studio to make works inside. It's always like something that starts from outside, from what society tells me. So in this case, I found myself inside my apartment and all of a sudden I couldn't even go out and all the fears, everything started. And I was like, uh, I didn't know what to do. So um, it was a big change, and I think it was really important and useful. And uh, uh, yeah, the obstacle was firstly the fact that I was still, I was forced to stay still, which <laughs> like physically, and uh, likely I wasn't mentally, because I was very active mentally. And uh, so that, that was the, the thing. I, I had to stay home and, and in my tiny apartment, and it had to become, become my studio. Mm. And um, yeah, so what I learned that, yeah, definitely that could be a challenge and, uh, and it, changed it. it changed my practice, it changed my, um, yeah, definitely my way of, I mean, working inside a very restricted place and with having a very expanded time completely changed my way of, of thinking and acting uh, mm. because I, even if I was thinking of making like a big sculpture I couldn't I was like in my place and I had to yeah I had to use whatever I had there um, yeah. so it was completely yeah different absolutely Danilo. yeah um, for me I mean in terms of uh, challenges I guess uh, I mean I never considered myself like a, a studio artist you know like someone that enjoy like a sustained studio for a long time working on a, on a piece 
uh, even though in a, in a sick way, I kind of enjoy it. So there is like a dual aspect into my practice. Um, uh, but uh, I, when I, when uh, uh, we were away for a spring break and the spring break became uh, three months and uh, I was in a house, uh, in a historical house actually, <laughs> Which was quite peculiar, but the the main challenge uh, for me was not the the lack of access to tools to my studio or to the community, the people that I love to hang out with. Which that was probably like the most impactful thing for me was the it's the challenge of having to deal with the the uh, an in, uh, a systemic transformation of the entire art world. So what happened for me was uh, uh, I had three shows that got postponed, like in the in the first week. I had the residency program and a new production uh, in the Southeast Asia that got cancelled. So uh, there were like a several uh, uh, commitments that I had that they were not only like professional commitments, but also like the goal that I was uh, producing uh, work and thoughts for. So uh, the disappearance of like these. Uh, uh, um, uh, this commitment or like this uh, uh, this goal kind of made me think of uh, like a how do I sustain like my art making like uh, without uh, the visibility that this uh, uh, opportunity I have granted me, and of course it translates into uh, uh, a need for uh, rethink the position of a uh, of an artist like into a society that uh, it's a kind of a hunger for content. So all the, this, uh, uh, this project that had been translated into, like everyone was asking like for digital content and especially like a, uh, of a certain type. So the complexity, the challenge for me was more like to deal with the lack of, uh, uh, of, uh, of context. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Daniela. Um, I think, you know, and speaking about these challenges, maybe I'd like to shift a little bit and talk about one of the most precious aspects I think of the project, uh, which is how central care and community has been uh, throughout the process, but especially in relation to these challenges and how we've kind of been able to overcome them um, as a team in a way. And I think that was very important on a base level because of what a difficult time it's been for everyone. Um, but especially because all of you are from Italy um, which was one of the hardest hit countries and you're now living and working in New York, which was one of the hardest hit cities. So there are so many layers to the challenges accompanying this moment. And I wonder whether this sense of separation or dissociation entered your work in some way um, and if homemade has helped you overcome that fracture and maybe also how the notion of home factors into all of this. It's like a big question, but maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very complicated Sorry, question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's actually very interesting. And I, f I mean, personally, for my work, I think that what all, all that you're asking is part of my work, and it's always been part of my work in a very deep and, you know, like on a, on a deep and core level. Um, the, you know, like the idea of home, the idea of, you know, like uh, displacement in a way, and the idea of migration. I think that, you know, like building communities is something that is, essential for me and I was thinking about this last week and I was thinking all those zoom meetings were very important during those days because you know like we were literally not meeting anyone else and we were not really having any contact you know like with anyone else but I also was thinking that, to the fact that you know like we are most of us are Italians and there is a factor in um, in the you know like we are all immigrants in a way and I think that there is uh, on one level this idea that you know like you look for that family or the house or the household that you left behind when you move in a way when you move from Italy or when you move you know like from what you consider was you know like your house and your family so I think that you know like there is um, this has been part of my practice all the time since I moved to New York you know like this idea of you know like try to um, get in contact with people and create community because that's what you need, you know, like, and, and I think that, uh, you know, May, that was like a, an essential part of the project. Um, and I think that that also helps, you know, like then, you know, like in making a work that it's not only about you and your specific and personal experience, but it becomes, you know, like about like a collective consciousness in a way. Mm -hmm. 
and in this specific project, I think that all of us, and I think that you realize that when you go to magazine and you see actually all the works from, from, from real, you know, like in real life, I think that we all in a way interfere and influence, you know, like each other's work. And it really becomes like a collect, a collective, you know, like effort. And, and that was great. You know, like that was beautiful. I completely agree with you. David? I feel that uh, the, the pandemic and the current crisis kind of sort of amplified maybe like um, a feeling that uh, I always had and I imagine that a lot of, of us living, uh, living abroad have pretty much on a daily basis, which is often to be in this kind of bubble because we don't, somehow we don't belong anymore in the country that we are from. We live in a city that is uh, made by immigrants and where everybody is coming from somewhere else, but yet we are not from here either. I think that this emergency kind of amplified and underlined that, that state because our lives are here and our, uh, especially, I mean, at least mine, it's, uh, it's here, let's say, but it did underline this thing of like this notion of like, but you could leave. I mean, you could be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that somewhere else were, you know, were people that we love, our families were in, in, in strong danger and, uh, and, and challenge. And, and it opened up all these feelings of you could be there as well, but also going there is not necessarily uh, the care that you would like to provide because actually in a pandemic, you could be even bringing in danger and, making the situation worse. So I think that the project with, uh, with Magazzino kind of, recon not reconnected, but like put together uh, a community that by the way, Magazzino has been building since years already, like independently from this project, I think that Magazzino has been incredibly dedicated to, to make us feel as part of a community in New York. But uh, the commission and the project, um, I think that gave us an incredibly precious sense of care, let's say. So in this apocalypse, there were expectations. Our work was valued, waited for, looked out for. And, and this, at least me, gave me, grounded me very much and um, focused me in my work and gave me the kind of feeling of, of a safe harbor inside, like it did in, it, it it gave me the idea that there was safety at, at a rich uh, hand reach, let's say. The notion of home, I think that is a little bit what I said before, I think that is a little complex for every immigrant or expatriate. Uh, I think that we have two homes, at least, at least I feel that I do. I have, I have the home that I come from, which is a, like it's a steady point that, that remains there. But my home, I think that is where uh, is where I belong, is, is where my future is, let's say. So, and that is made by choices. That is where, uh, where, my, where my loved one is, where my work is. But that is a far more flexible notion, let's say, because that could move, that could be somewhere else, and it will still be home. I think that Magazzino's project grounded that feeling of home in a city that we chose, but in a city that was, and still is, heavily wounded let's say mm. so yeah uh, so i think yeah when when the pandemic started uh, i mean um yeah as an italian i think what i experienced uh, was that i already i was experiencing something that i i saw was coming here somehow it was and and that was really scary to me like at the very beginning, we had no idea what was going on. We, we were just hearing of people like getting sick and dying. And Italy was this, and it was like every day. And then all of a sudden there was a lockdown here. And uh, again, as I said, my life completely changed. So I was spending the day literally just looking at news, Italian news, talking to friends in Italy. All my family is there, everybody is in Italy. So to me it was like, and I was here and I, I live here, I work here and I, I feel like this is my, my place now to be, but I, I felt like also conflicting a lot because I didn't know if go back there or not, if what was the best 
thing to do. It was really a moment of, of, uh, of confusion, but I think for everybody. And then at the same time, I was working on a show, on a, on a a project which was supposed to be exhibited in April and May, I had four shows canceled. So at the same time, people were calling, like to fund the shows. So to me, it was like constantly like, oh my God, everything was like falling apart. And then I got, uh, I was invited by Magazzino to do this project. And to me, it was like, uh, all of a sudden I, I had this, I felt like, felt like I was part of a family all of a sudden. And I felt like, all the thing, all all the the losses, everything I was losing was kind of somehow not everything was was lost. There was something coming up new, and the fact that I could uh, um, I could think about making a project as the other one was not uh, happening, and the fact that I couldn't see my family, I couldn't see my friends, I, everything was planned was completely cancelled, and the fact that I had something to work on and our meetings we had this pretty tv every every week and then every two weeks we had we were like uh, we had to talk about the progresses of our work that was so important to me it was like really being part of a group and a community it was not only it was very also like a family like so really uh, emotionally really important also, as uh, people and that to make the, the same work, I mean, we had we could exchange our ideas, that was something that usually never happens, you know. So, yeah. this was a plus, a big plus to me, and um, so I, I, that was the moment, the shift, the moment when I was like, okay, this is really important, um, and that's the way I kind of experienced that. Yeah. That's <laughs> Sorry, I was unmuting. No, um, well, I mean, I found myself again. I mean, it was like a very special situation, like in which, like, we, I had to take, care, like, it was only not only anymore me and my partner, but uh, it was I was in another family. And when the magazino invitation, like, to start to, uh, I mean, to be involved like uh, in this project it, it was uh, almost like uh, as uh, david was saying like a uh, uh, sort of a safe harbor like uh, for me i wasn't like in the lighthouse like uh, somewhere like in the middle of the ocean like uh, symbolically and physically <laughs> and uh, having this connection with the uh, with people that uh, i mean other artists and the, the staff uh, and that i know uh, i mean we know each other but we didn't uh, knew like each other so well as we know now, like in terms of, uh, I mean, I think we spend like more time like uh, uh, looking at each other in the face, like from Zoom than, uh, than not the, how, how much like we spend that time like to uh, like being like in a physical company, like in the last uh, several years that we, we've known each other. So uh, the, the, uh, the possibility of like uh, having sharing opinions, sharing fears, sharing doubts, uh, and uh, uh, sh seeing like the face of concern, phases of, uh, uh, of, oh my God, last night, like, uh, you know, like the, the noise when the protest started, like these were all like very precious uh, uh, moments, like not only for me, but I think like for everyone, like to see each other perspective, like uh, in, uh, uh, um, in everything that been, we've been, the world has been going through in the last uh, several months, and, um, and, and and yet, like I think, like the idea of uh, of doubts, which are like a, the the idea of doubts and the necessity of building like a, a compass or like a way to decipher like a, the complexity of what was happening in terms of events, there were like a, two other things that really informed my work, like a, you know. Uh, like when uh, when we started to meet each other like on uh, on uh, on this uh, aperitivo uh, like I mean I, I didn't know like what I wanted to create or how I wanted to comment on the moment and I, I really don't think it was a moment to comment on anything it was a moment to just like uh, find uh, like uh, what's the light in yourself that can uh, help you to see the future like in the next uh, uh, in the next months and uh, in terms of of home like the 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 connection with italy i mean you know like uh, at the end of the day we always leave a place and the place we leave is always home you know like uh, 
you know, I was away from New York. New York was my home. When I'm in New York, like somehow, like Italy is my home. But at the end, home it's also like a part of the uh, of the community that you have around. So, like um, at this point, I think home uh, it's a uh, it's it's a it's a very uh, you know it's a very expanded kind of concept. So, which is great. <laughs> You know, yesterday, um, Francesco C. Matthew, who's one of the participating artists, of course, he was saying, he used the word lifeline. And I thought that was such a beautiful word and something that all of you have touched on in different ways and that I couldn't agree with more too when I said at the beginning, really that you've all given me hope and joy. I think that this was something that kept me going and I feel like Danilo said that it kept all of us going in some way. Um, and, I think it was Ale and Maria who were talking about the Zoom meetings, but I'd love to go back to that for a moment just because that was so special. It's something that really doesn't happen to be able to share that much time together. Um, and I'd love to hear maybe about what it was like to share about your work so frequently um, and if you've ever done that before and maybe if that's something that you hope to continue in the future um, in some way. Obviously not, it, it won't be the same way that it was in this very particular moment, but maybe if that's something that you hope to transform later on and continue doing. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, it, it's not something, it really reminded me um, of grad school in a way, you know, like you, uh, you are in a space with, you know, like other artists and other professionals and you have to, like you have a structure in a way and you have to um, be, like have this discipline in a way of you know like of respect to your work and respect to uh, the work of other people and there is like a it's like a constant you know like learning experience i think you know like the one of you know like um making art because you you need to um you need to you know like give feedback and you know like try to improve you know like or give your point of view to somebody else's work in a way that it, you know like enriches also your own experience and your own work so i think that that was, you know, like this idea of like um, this mutual exchange, I think was very much present in those Zoom meetings. And I think it's like something that um, is essential for any artist, you know, like you need to have like a, a relationship to your colleagues, you know, like and your fellow, you know, like um, artists around you in order to like proceed, you know, like and, um, and make your work, you know, like meaningful in a way, you know, like, or at least that's part of, of you know, like um, the art making process for me. And I think that, yeah, those Zoom meetings were essential, as I said. And um, yeah, it's just something that I really hope, you know, like to continue, but maybe in a physical, you know, physical space. I think that <laughs> uh, what we learn is also that, you know, like, I don't know if we can really replace, you know, like the actual real world uh, with Zoom, but it was for sure like a, a nice um, substitute of that, you know, like, and it, yeah, it was very important. I feel that for me, it's been, it, it's been a great experience and something that I immediately kind of relate because I use and do a lot of studio visits and yeah. I think of myself as a fairly anxious artist. So I, I, I request studio visits from like fellow artists uh, and, and friends because I go periodically for a moment where, especially if there is something new going on, I really need that exchange. And, and it means a verbal exchange. And, and in that conversation, I make sense of it. So it's, it's truly through the presentation of the thing and through the comments and through the through the exchange that something that is forming it kind of like solidify and make sense even to my to my own eyes so i always did that and i i definitely hope to uh, keep doing it in the in the future uh, doing it over zoom was was a great experience because it kind of kept that feeling and that uh, that opportunity even under uh, under quarantine let's say i did find very valuable also the request of writing a periodical statement because mm. i think that that is slightly different than what i would normally do in a studio visit let's say in a studio visit is that unplanned uh, open conversation let's say where you understand things while talking and while hearing what the other people say while a statement it implies thought and responsibility and, and that is something that i don't do that often 
especially not in a public way. Like I might write down notes on my work, but I'm very careful if I have to write something, uh, something that, that is public and that it will remain. So this, uh, this point of the structure of having to make like this bi-weekly periodical statement, I thought it was particularly meaningful and helpful in the whole experience. I'm glad I felt the same way about writing so frequently about all of your work. I think it was, and also about having so many Zoom meetings with all of you. I think it was a great way of also getting to understand your work uh, more profoundly. So I'm glad that you felt that too. Maria? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this uh, um, meetings uh, brought me to, I mean, I, more than meetings, I would say the exchange we had, which was really important, uh, was uh, brought me back to university when I took my master and also brought me back to the Winnie program, which was the only moment, like, like the last moment when I could really talk to other artists and, and curators and share ideas. And that is what I miss a lot usually because even if we have studio visits, even if, yeah, I mean, of course we can meet and talk, but it's not the same thing. I, mean, I think what was very, very important about this format is that we had schedule. And, uh, and I knew we were meeting and that was time for us to talk and share everything that uh, sometimes, I mean, we started our meetings, we were all so nervous, like the first ability, but we were all like lost, like we didn't really know what, because of the session, and then it continued and it, it, it was better and better and the more we were, and we didn't know what to do. And then the more we were working, the more and sharing our, our thoughts and ideas, the more we were, getting more uh, conscious of what was going on. And it was very important. It was like very, very important to connect, um, connect us and, uh, and build like, um, um, I think motivation to me was really important. Because again, as I say, like time was really expanded. And, uh, and there was like, there were moments where, you know, space, staying in the same place all day and, uh, without having a schedule would have been difficult but for us it was like oh we have the meeting and also i'm working i have to work sometimes it was hard sometimes it was easier uh, but having that schedule was absolutely uh important i think at that time yeah no i i totally agree with everything that has been said i mean like the 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 idea of like having like a regularity it's almost like having a good diet you know like uh, once a week like doing like some kind of routine it's like a super important uh but beside that i mean the you know, like uh, um, the people that know me, that know my work, know that how much like I'm not uh, uh, super happy. Of, like, uh, I mean, if if I get engaged, like into explaining my process, like I get super engaged and uh, like I really uh, enjoy like to explain like the process of everything. So, for uh, uh, the process of everything I produce and. Um, uh, during the Magazzino uh, uh, Aperitivo, uh, I was put like in this very weird position in which I had to somehow like uh, um, give a little bit of something that was still ongoing. It wasn't quite ready yet, so I had to figure out how this script, as, uh, um, as Alessandro was describing it, could uh, uh, be somehow representative of a process that was completely conceptual i mean uh, it really taught me how to share something in fact if you guys remember like in one of the events like i perform my piece basically like by with the voice because i really didn't know how to make everyone like a uh, uh, you know uh, how to connect uh, the audience with the work that wasn't existing but it was existing in a way so it really there was a lot of um, uh, experimentation uh, which of course those were also like the early days of um, uh, uh, of every everything going uh, uh, in remote you no know? like a uh, teaching was starting to go in remote like for uh, my friends that are uh, teachers and, like my partner as well so uh, there was a lot of learning of like this new tool that we have and like how much this tool is different from reality you know like it's something that i, I really enjoy the fact that uh, we all wait for someone to talk to the, your turn like to talk there is no chatting on top of each other which is a very amazing feature of zoom over real life 
That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> Um, well, I think we're at the point where I should probably open to the audience questions. So let me just take a look and see. Uh, okay, so we have a question for everyone. Uh, how has this experience influenced the way you will work in the future? And will you continue the themes that you explored during the project timeline? Um, I think that this project for me um, specifically helped me a lot to, you know, like push further my, you know, like this cultural aspect of my work, which, um, or at least it gave me the opportunity, you know, like to focus a little bit more on that. And that was something that I really needed. I feel like I really needed to do. Um, so yeah, it was extremely important for that. And for sure, that's something I'm gonna bring, you know, like on with me in the next um, chapter, let's say. Um, I'm now, you know, like I finally have access to my studio and I'm really excited now, you know, like to work um, with concrete or, you know, like with stones, with, you know, like marble, you know, like on a also like different scale. So I'm excited for that to happen and to get a little more, you know, like messy, you know, like to do stuff that I just technically and physically couldn't do mm -hmm. in my apartment. Um, to play a little bit more, you know, like with color. So for sure, you know, like what I've done during those months, yeah, I'm, it, it is the very, the very beginning of something that uh, I, it will evolve. And I also feel that it was a natural evolution of what I was doing before. So, you know, like there is like this nice, you know, like feeling of continuation, I think, um, that um, I'm bringing, yeah, to my studio these days, you know, like, and I'm pushing forward. I feel that in my case, it's uh, the question of continuing what I've been uh, doing for uh, for homemade in the future is a bit of a yes and maybe, mm. meaning that um, for me it wasn't really from the start. It wasn't really about the creation of a body of work. I really didn't see it that way. I really felt it more as a uh, as an open framed uh, series of studies, and in that way. What I've been doing, uh, what I've done for uh, my magazine will definitely continue because it was kind of about igniting something and uh, uh, something kind of unpredictable and unknown. So that is proceeding, that is going on and uh, how to have a dialogue with color is a conversation that is, that is going on uh, in my work. I don't know if it will, I don't think that it will take the, the same like formal outcomes, let's say, because that was a kind of uh, uh, of my interest from the beginning. Uh, the tool, let's say, of having like studies on paper, I hope that I will uh, do it again. I think there is something that I enjoyed very much and I learned that it can be applicable in a, in a completely different setup than my studio. So mm -hmm. I imagine that in the future, maybe during traveling or during other experience where I kind of need to step back from my daily practice and have kind of like a, a refreshing moment, um, I can go back to that. Maria? Yeah. Um, yeah, for me it was really, again, as I say, very, very different, the approach, because uh, I was very directly, I was uh, visualizing my emotions and my feelings, which is something that I really never done in my work. And I, I found it really, uh, reliving and, and uh, something that I will I will definitely uh, do again and maybe in, in kind of a different way but um, yeah somehow uh, it was very um, introspective so my work was completely during the lockdown it was uh, I was really like uh, uh, making a journey of all my, my like my, my, my feelings mostly and, and that was, uh, um, uh, I transferred that into my work uh, prat practically by also writing uh, text, text that I usually is something I don't do in my work. I, I never write, I never, uh, but this was very helpful because he helped me to, with, with this project I'm working on now, I'm, I'm writing a script and uh, it was, uh, in the beginning, I was a little bit uh, confused. I didn't know if I was able to write a script, if I needed some help or something. But now I feel like 
stronger. So I, I'm, I'm writing a script now for another project. It's like a continuation of something that really happened during during uh, lockdown. And also in terms of, uh, of uh, like material, I, I always, I've been using uh, ceramic, but I usually use uh, ceramic or porcelain like without glazing it. And But this was an addition in my work. I, I glazed the work, uh, which is something I definitely continue in my practice, yeah. Anila? Well, I mean, for me, uh, um, I mean, I think that specific work is not the continuation of something and it's not the beginning of anything else as much as it is the main frame of what keeps me alive and keeps my work somehow grounded in uh, uh, in a very specific interest that uh, uh, that I constantly look at. I mean, it's like a it's like a matrix or like the mainframe of myself. It's a self portrait. Let's put it this way. <laughs> like I really believe that work is very much a self portrait. And uh, I've been looking. I've been going back looking at that work like uh, every every other day. I mean, at least like twice a week because uh, um, because I'm having ideas and ideas like in this. Uh, this specific time are very uh, foggy sometimes and uh, going back to that uh, which uh, came after uh, like many many weeks of, uh, of work and uh, like thinking and, uh, and, uh, and focusing uh, in a very specific time uh, so it kind of gave me that kind of uh, direction that uh, uh, and the confidence mm. um, uh, to uh, embark like a new journeys, you know, like kind of uh, correct me. Uh, it's, um, and when I say it's not something that I will keep working on or it's not, uh, it's not something that I, that I've informed like my future works. I mean, I'm lying because that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, it's, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, uh, it's a very unique uh, uh, process that I've been going through I'm glad that I've done it like with the <laughs> in the framework of uh, uh, what Magazzino have put together uh, for us and um, you know you know I think it's a uh, yeah I mean it's a self-portrait at the end and and of course the the medium I use as always is time yes like that's the medium of the work and uh, yeah. which is something very hard to sculpt you know Grazie Danilo. Um, we only have about five minutes left, so this will have to be a little bit more brief, but I'd love to ask one more audience question. Um, so we have another one for everyone. Do you think that the current state of the world has made people more receptive to the themes in your art or to art in general? Um, whoa. <laughs> um, um, well, I think that, you know, like the experience of the pandemic was very, um, I think, well, like specifically for my work, I think that um, it just, you know, like underlined this um, constant presence of touch and the importance of, you know, like um, real life, you know, like communication and exchange that it's definitely, you know, like a big part of, you know, like what I'm doing. And I think that, um, I mean, I don't know if it's gonna change the way we look at things or the way people will look at my work, but um, for sure it's gonna be, um, maybe people will be a little more conscious about that. And I think that in general, you know, like we will look at other people's work and work in general, but not just artwork, you know, like relationships, you know, like on so many other, other levels on a more physical way and the importance of, you know, like um, physical contact, I think. Bobby? I'm, I'm not sure, actually. I think that is, it's a question that will require a lot of thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's say that I don't, if I had to reply right, right now, I, I don't see any reason why this situation will, uh, will make anybody look at my work in a better way. Actually, I think that one thing that slightly concerns me of the whole art experiences that at least for me, for what I care, is a very much a physical experience. Uh, the ultimate goal is always to experience the work 
physically in a place mm -hmm. and that, that the possibility of doing that has been is uh, it's going to be a challenge for a little while so mm -hmm. i don't know yet how we're going to work around that maria yeah um well i think uh i've been thinking about it a lot because i don't know how, what will how it will be if we will forget everything or not this is something we don't know yet but about my work i um i i literally i visualized all my journey in those two months with all the all, all like from fear to rupture to loss every kind of feelings i had and my my point is like I mean I think that someone might experience the same thing. Might have they might have not everything, but some of it, and they might see themselves in my work. So to me, it's more like about yeah, this is me, and uh, people look at it and say like, oh yeah, this is me too. That's it. I don't feel like they will see my work in a different way. It's more kind of a empathy in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Daniel? Well, I I don't know I. I there is a part of me that wants to believe that uh, the, the this traumatic experience that uh, we have been all through, like uh, the entire planet, <laughs> I mean, can translate into like a, a need for meaning. Like, uh, and uh, I really hope, like, a, you know, like a, everything that is just like a surface, like, it will be somehow like a, a you know. A, uh, I don't know, um, contagious by meaning, you know, like, uh, um, and uh, there is another part of me that uh, would like to see, like, the idea of uh, of consciousness, of like, a, or like community, like a winning over competitive individualism, which is what has been driving, driving, like the uh, the. Uh, I mean, social economic world. I mean, layout like in the last uh, uh, in the last several years. So I don't know. I think Hart like has a really big responsibility like to uh, um, somehow introduce uh, uh, even like to the to the youngest uh, uh, of our community like what does what what does care mean? What is beauty? What can be found like in those things? So. In these terms, like uh, a moment of trauma can always like generate like uh, uh, some uh, new expansion of like the things that do have meaning. Grazie, Daniela. I wish we could continue this conversation. I'm so sad. We've unfortunately gotten to the end of our time. Um, but before we formally conclude, thank you, all Ale and Davide, Maria and Danilo for being here today. Um, and also thank you to everyone who joined us virtually for this conversation. Um, again, we really, really hope to see you if you're able at the exhibition um, in Cold Spring at Magazzino, which is on view until September 7th. And thank you. And now I will hand it back to Vittorio. Ciao, Vittorio. Hi, guys. I've been enjoying uh, this conversation uh, a lot. Can you hear me right, well, right? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. No, I it just been uh, so inspiring actually uh, hearing you, but also being with the works in person and really, uh, uh, you know, one of the uh, the the uh, one of the things I think was uh, uh, that you you mentioned was the reaction from the public. You know, like since we've been opening, I cannot tell you how many uh, feedback we got from uh, visitors. They really uh, for. Uh, from artist to artist because you guys all like develop different uh, approaches like and different themes related to what what happened really um resonate to a lot of personal experiences of visitors now and i do also want to say you know it's been such an overwhelming response of uh, public and people do really want to go back to see art and i think in a way art does have that kind of uh, power of uh, awakening but also comforting you know i I think of um, uh, Maria's work, and I, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like many people are engaging, uh, engaging with with that work. Uh, I would say here, in magazine, or really following a little bit like the narrative that you created. But another thing I wanted to 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 say that I found was very uh, something that Danilo mentioned. The project really started uh, early on and it was started uh, and I got some inspiration I have to say I'm gonna actually quote Danilo in this uh, because we were discussing about this obsession of institutions going digitally right away 
and just trying to gather more and more and more content without and at the same time the budgets were cut uh, the projects were down there was really no perspective and no one was really doing anything new but there was this idea of recycling content and just um, not necessarily thinking about the perspective of the artist uh, and that's how really the project uh, the project in a way the conversation i would say started also with our founders and that's how we got to uh, uh, build uh, the program and the invitations and the support that we were able to uh, to do and i do have to say it's paramount for any institution at least for ours to really uh, make, uh, to really support artists and make those projects possible uh, and to compensate the artists as well. You know, we don't want to forget that like pretty much up to now also moving forward, it, the, the road is still uncertain for, for, many, for many of you, but for everyone really. And you know, this idea of structure, uh, it was not just on your end, but was also on our end. I feel like uh, we ha I haven't met, I haven't been in Magazino for, for three months now finally we're here but also it was a way for us to really frame our um, uh, <laughs> our own team and having uh, uh, Nancy and Giorgio in every single uh, uh, Zoom really helped us to keep in a way like <laughs> like you know the familiarity of uh, of the of the space uh, and one other aspect that I found is important and I want to highlight also because the project in a way is not over is uh, uh, that idea of structure the journal the diary that you all kept and of course you cannot really uh, see it in uh, the exhibition but that will play a really important part in the catalog that we're uh, producing and that's going to be the next uh, step i would say of the project because we we do feel that the project in a way was uh, in two phases that was that I would say quarantine time, but then of course uh, the show uh, with all the enthusiasm and the hopes uh, that really brought us to being open, being able to open, uh, carried us all here. But that's a very important element, I would say, that we'll still need to um, uh, investigate even more. Uh, and I do have uh, a message from uh, our founders, Nancy and Giorgio, and I'm gonna share it with you. Grazie a tutti, Giorgio and I are so grateful to uh, all of you for participating in the homemade project and struggling through this challenging time and creating such a personal and powerful work. We're so happy to hear that we were able to provide a family for you during this moment. Community is at the core of what we want to do at Magazzino. And we're so happy to have the exhibition here in Magazzino right now. Um, heads off to Chiara and Vittorio for leading this project to fruition. But thank you uh, to all of you uh, uh, and uh, your generosity. I do feel uh, so being surrounded now by the works, but being able to share this project with you was really, I don't want to say the highlight of, the, of my quarantine time, but definitely I would say it will be um, uh, an, an unforgettable experience. And I think we're building the, uh, the grounds for uh, more and more ambitious uh, projects uh, together. And I hope this will help uh, you all uh, uh, to move forward with your uh, career and next projects. So I want to thank uh, all of you, thank you, Chiara. Thank you, everyone uh, that watched uh, us. Uh, um, I do want to also say that uh, this Zoom, uh, this, uh, those conversations are recorded. They will be online. They will stay there uh, for anyone that wants to rewatch it. Uh, um, and I will uh, welcome you, Magazzino, if you're back. But uh, watch out for the catalog and, uh, and more content uh, soon. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.